You are listening to the Shoto, Brady, and Dutton Sermon Audio. You can find out more about us at umshoto.net. You can watch our live stream of our service through our Facebook page, and you can certainly join us live and in person any Sunday. If you love what's going on here and you want to support the church, you can do so at umshoto.net. The scripture this morning is from Paul's first letter to Timothy, one verse from chapter 6. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, we continue on with our sermon series. We can finish it up today. This sermon series slash game show of that's not in there. And I've had dreams and and flashes of moments in this series of being Bob Barker. I don't have a giant will, but I wish I did, especially for this one when we talk about money. And over the last few weeks and, and taking on this series, that's not in there, We've been combing over quotes and sayings that have been held in the same regard as Scripture, but they're not quite there. As a reminder, we started with God helps those who help themselves, and we reclaimed it to be God is with us all. And last week, we tackled the the difficult statement of love the sinner, hate the sin. Hopefully to understand that when we allow hate to have a place in our lives, there is very little room, if any, for love. And I hope that we came away knowing that love is the catalyst for hope and grace and change, not hate. And today we have our season finale, if you will, of That's Not In There. And it's the game in which our contestants are taking these quotes and misquoted and misrepresented as scripture to understand and reclaim them. To get us back into the spirit of this game, here's a couple of quotes that we don't always get right. And uh, to see how it changes the nuance or context of the quotes. And so we begin with an Oscar Wilde quote. You'll remember him as a a famous, famous, Irish playwright and poet. It's a really hard sentence. He was around in the the mid to late 1800s. And one of the quotes that we like to say from him is, life is far too important to be taken seriously. Pretty good, right? But the actual quote is, life is far too important a thing ever to talk seriously about it. And now I'm the first one to admit the way we say it's a whole lot better and a whole lot easier. (laughs) But we move on to the first man on the moon, our very own Neil Armstrong. A quote that we love to say and that's been said in movies and, and books and all over the place. We like to say that when he took a step on the moon that he said that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind but we actually miss it. He actually says that's one small step for a man and one giant leap for mankind. And I know, just like the other two, I know it doesn't matter if we leave a word or two out or if we change it to make it roll off the tongue a little bit better. But if we take a look at at these two quotes in particular, it, it changes when we leave things out or Or we take Oscar Wilde's quote and make it easier to say, but at what cost? We lose the poetry in it. And with Neil Armstrong, we we lose a little bit of context, whether it's a man or for man. When we leave that simple A out, it changes what he meant. And so on this week's episode of That's Not In There, we're going to take a look at a phrase that it's actually kind of in there, 
but not really. And it's all about how if we leave a simple word out, it changes the scripture and makes it harmful. Today's quote does come from scripture. Today's quote does come from scripture, or at least part of it does. And over the years, it's been used many ways to condemn the rich and bring shame to those who have money or who are well off. Many over the years have said money is the root of all evil. And they have passed it off as scripture for long enough. But I have you know that that quote, that that scripture is not really in there. The actual quote from scripture comes, you've heard it already this morning, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. What it says is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have wandered away from faith and have impaled themselves with a lot of pain because they made money their goal. See, I believe there's a big difference in this scripture. If you take it out of, if you, if you leave out words and simply say money is the root of all evil. See, people in the church have been, and around the world have been using this saying to bring shame for far too long. And it's also a painful reality that, that the church has done this and misquoted this and misguided it for stewardship campaigns. To shame people into giving more money to the church. And I know, I know what you're thinking. How can a pastor or a finance chair or a finance board use this scripture? This misquoted verse about money to convince people to give more money to the church. Believe it or not, it's pretty easy. And I've heard it with my own ears, unfortunately. I've heard people say that if you want to be a true Christian, if you want to be a good Christian and love God, you have to hate money. And if you hate money, you don't need it. And if you don't need it, you got to give it somewhere. Oh, well, what better place to give it than the church? Because God needs your money. I've heard that church. And I know, I know, why? Why would anybody ever get up in the pulpit in front of their church and say that, but they do? This misquoted verse has been the crux of far too many stewardship campaigns. But when we take 1 Timothy verse 10 and we put it in a fuller context, we get a different picture of Paul, what Paul's trying to teach here. See, Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, who was a young guy going out and trying to lead his churches. And Paul's giving him advice. Here's how you teach. Here's how you teach people about faith. And so if we back up a few verses to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, we get a better picture. We get more context of what Paul's actually trying to say. He says, actually, godliness is a great source of profit when it is combined with being happy with what you already have. We didn't bring anything into this world, and so we can't take anything out of it. Which, that's a different sermon for a different time. I think moms misquote that one quite a bit. <laughs> I brought you into this world, I'm going to take... <laughs> that's for next season. <laughs> Verse 8. We'll be happy with food and clothing. But people who are trying to get rich fall into temptation. They are trapped by many stupid and harmful passions that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Verse 10. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have wandered away from faith and have impaled themselves with a lot of pain because they made money their goal. See, Paul's encouragement for teaching here isn't a condemnation of money but a warning against the love of money. His argument about, uh, or his argument for money being evil is not just simply in its existence, but it's the love and the desire to have as much money as possible. And the root of all kinds of evil is not being able to get enough. And the root of all kinds of evil is the willingness to mistreat and to destroy other people. 
to gain more than you need. That's what Paul's getting at here. And I believe there's a big difference, in my opinion, between money as the root of all evil and the love of money as the root of all kinds of evil. I know just a couple of those words in the right place make it sound different, but I think it makes a big difference. Because here's the thing about money. It's always been a great source of both good and evil in this world. It's no secret. It's no secret that money is one of the most important values that our cu culture and our country have as well as across the world. If we look back throughout our history, our American history, we can see, we can trace back what the almighty dollar can do. The same can be said for world history, and unfortunately so, the same can be said for church history. Money can be a significant source of evil, but when it is, it's because there's more love for money than there is for God and for people. And when we have more love for people and for God than we have for money, the narrative begins to change. Great things can be done and have been done with money when the intention is to bring hope to people. See, I could certainly zoom in or zoom out and look at this idea a, on a global level to justify our point, all the good things that have been done. But I'd rather not. I'd rather keep it right here and look at all the good things that have been done here. You and I wouldn't be here in this room right now if it weren't for the generosity of others. And it wasn't just a financial generosity. It wasn't just a financial generosity that built our churches or our ministries over the last hundred and some odd years. It wasn't only money that funded the life of the church over that time frame. It was so much more. It was a love of God and people and a desire to respond faithfully to hope, to the hope that God brings to this world. And those, all of those who have gone on before us, they responded by faith. And they gave in many significant ways, not just financially, to make sure that there was a place that offers hope and love and grace here in our community today. Let's go back to 1 Timothy. If we go on into verse 18, hear what Paul has to say. He says, tell them to do good, to be rich. There we go, we could stop there, right? To be rich in good, the good things they do. To be generous and to share with others. When they do these things, they will save a treasure for themselves that is a, a good foundation for the future. That way, they can take hold of what is truly life. See, church, the mo money is not the root of all evil. I don't for a minute believe that. Does that have a hand in it? Sure. The root of evil is anything that kills love and life. And so today, this sermon isn't about giving away all that we have. And it's not about justifying keeping all that we have. What we're getting at here is what is the root of all that is good? Generosity. As Paul unpacks the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, he goes on to say generosity is the root of all that is good. Paul reminds us to be generous in all that we have, to share with others. And no, this is not a pitch to put more in the offering plate here in a minute. It's not a, a, a pitch to remain... I got lost. I mashed two sentences together. Hmm. It's simply not a pitch to put more in the offering plate. And it's, it's simply a pitch to remain generous in all that we have, in all that we do, in a way that bring God, brings God's hope and love to this world. 
that we continue to build upon that foundation in which those who have gone on before us started. So how do we do that? How do we build upon that foundation? Which I know is a strange thing to think about when we're in a fairly finished building. But we're still building upon the foundation. And I think of our baptismal and membership vows. See, when we were all baptized, we vowed to renounce sin and evil, to resist evil and injustice and oppression at all costs. We confess that Jesus Christ is our Savior and we put our trust in His grace and we promise to serve the church in which Christ has opened up to all people. And in our baptismal vows, we vow to support the church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. See, each of us is called through our baptismal vows to do all that we can to end evil. To bring hope to the world. And so I don't think money is the root of all evil. And, and I don't even think it's just the love of money that creates evil. I don't think that. It's the love of our own selfish ambition that, that disconnects us with God and with people that allows evil into this world. And so we find where evil is in this world. And we do our best to squash it. And the way that we do that is different for each and every one of us. But I can tell you what I think it comes from is this generosity. This generosity of love and hope and grace. And we find our own ways to, to push evil out of this world by being generous in our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. I know that's a really weird way to talk about money and to talk about evil. But there's a lot of it that's going around. And as the season finale of That's Not In There comes to a close... How do we begin to reframe? I don't even want to reclaim this. I just want to reframe it. How do we reframe money as the root of evil? And I think simply put, it's not money that is evil. It's selfish desires and greed that cause evil in this world. And that goes so far beyond money. And so we reframe it by being generous by being generous in all that we have, by being generous in our prayers when we, we come here and we lift them up, when we pray at home, when we silently just love folks, when we're generous in our presence, when we show up here or we go to Dutton or we were in Brady or we go eat fish jelly down the street. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that. That was my cheesy... <laughs> game show host joke for the day. We go eat lutefisk down the street. When we show up in, in people's homes and the hospitals and we see them in the grocery store, it's our presence. It's our generosity and our presence that matters. It's our gifts. Yeah, those are sometimes financial. Sometimes it's playing music. Sometimes it's being our worship leader. Sometimes it's taking a pie to someone's home or whatever. Our gifts are many different things, and they make a difference when we're generous. Our service, showing up, getting dirty, putting out cookies, making coffee, whatever it is. Here in the church or in our community, my gosh, showing up to hear some, some music and giving, giving to the food pantry, service, and our gifts, our presence, our prayers. And if we have anything, church, we have our witness, we have our story. And out of all of those things, that is the most unique. Because not one of our stories is the same. And yet God is there. And to be generous in sharing that story of, of how God got us through with love and grace, when times weren't so great, 
Let us be generous in sharing that. We could play this game of that's not in there every Sunday until the end of time because we have not yet scratched the surface of quotes and misquotes, of things that have been passed off as Scripture. But I assure you we won't. This is our last Sunday of this sermon series for a while. It may come back up, I don't know. But let us remember one thing. Let us do good. Let us be rich in the good things that we do. Let us be generous and let us share with others. Because when we do these things, we save a treasure for ourselves that is a good foundation for the future. That way, we can take hold of what is truly life. Church, we have a foundation here from our past, our present, and into our future. And through our generosity and our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, we build upon that today and tomorrow so that our community continues to have a church for all people that shares God's love and grace. Let us go and be generous in all that we have. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. You are listening to the Shoto, Brady, and Dutton Sermon Audio. You can find out more about us at umshoto.net. You can watch our live stream of our service through our Facebook page, and you can certainly join us live and in person any Sunday. If you love what's going on here and you want to support the church, you can do so at umshoto.net.